And behind me was Bill Bird and Newt. Number 57 and number 58 of the year. And they knew it was mine because that's the way I always marked the golf ball. I would have kept it, it missed, but I missed three putts. <laughs> you know, that's why I lost it. <laughs> okay. So you got to mark your golf ball. Um, first of all, thank you to my dear wife for proofreading this. I did the slides. I'm responsible for the slides, but my wife did proofread them, so most of the errors are gone. My wife did miss one error, of which Beth Vandenberg caught, so thank you, Beth. And lastly, thank Melanie for setting this all up, because all I had to do was do the slides, email it to her, and poof, here we go. All right, are we ready? I gotta turn this on now. Doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Ah. All right. So we're gonna talk about the changes for 2019. The USGA says that there are 31 major changes. Today they sent out an email to I don't know who they sent it to. But the, the USGA and the RNA, I just got this today, said that these are the, quote, 20 most important changes to the rules of health in 2019. My presentation actually has 18 of the 20. The two that they have on the sheet are so picky -yoon that they can't possibly be considered major. But at the end of this presentation, if anybody wants to ask a question, I'll tell you what two I didn't have on mine that the USGA has on theirs. Um, most of these 31 fall into these three categories, one, two, three. Elimination of the accidental no harm, no foul penalties, the, the, uh, the permit actions that were previously prohibited, and they simplify the relief procedure. So if you if you don't know any if you don't remember anything else from this presentation, just remember these three bullet points. That's your takeaway. Pappy, you can go home. You got your three points for the day. That's all you got to remember. Thanks, <laughs> Dan. All right. Elimination of the double hit. Let me give you an example. 1985, June of 1985, U.S. Open. Anyone know who played in the U.S. Open in 1985? No <laughs> Who played in the U.S. Chang or something? T.C. The initials are important because he eventually became known as Two Chip. <laughs> <laughs> so, 1985, U.S. Open, Andy North and T.C. Chen uh, going into the final round at Oakland Hills outside of Detroit. It's on the fifth hole of the last day of the tournament. Andy North is four stroke down. T.C. Chen hits his shot on the fifth hole just a little bit long into tall grass. When he goes to take his swing, his club catches and he goes choo choo choo, boom! And the ball, instead of going at the hole, goes into more tall grass. He's kind of shaken by this point. He then, so now he's lying three. He gets a penalty stroke. He's now lying four. He chips it on in three putts for an eight. Andy North pars the hole for a four. And the rest is history. Andy North gets his second U.S. Open because of T.C. Chen's penalty score. 2019, T.C. Chen probably won't be playing, but he isn't going to get penalty stroke because it's a no harm, no foul penalty. A double hit, by definition, it's accidental. You're always worse off because you're chipping it here, and when you double hit, off you go. So that's an elimination of, of that. I'll talk more about that later. Um, permitted ad, um, removing of black walnut uh, from a bunker. I was just out at University Ridge about two weeks ago for the Girls State Tournament. On the ninth hole at University Ridge, the number one girl in the state hit her second shot just short, hit her third shot, she pulled it into that bunker up, um, up at the clubhouse on number nine. What's in that? Thousands, yeah, 50 black walnuts. <laughs> They're all about this size. They fell right from the tree. It's the same thing we have on 16. In the fall, they fall right into that. Can you move a loose impediment in a hazard? The answer is no. 
So I get called over, the, rules, the, the coach says, well, this isn't fair. The girl's almost in tears, she says, it isn't fair. I said, yes, it isn't fair, but I'll tell you what, if you can wait three more months. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't think it was funny, but anyways, in 2019, you're gonna be able to remove black walnuts from a bunker. Just black walnuts. Yeah, just uh, black walnuts. I'll, I'll expand. <laughs> the, the third major point is simplifies the procedures. Uh, example, uh, dropping the ball uh, from knee height most of you know that for the last 30 years, this is the way we have been dropping. I see there's some older people in the crowd who may remember pre-1985. And if you ever remember Billy Casper at the Masters, he dropped the ball like this after the rule had changed and he got a penalty because he used to drop it the wrong way. Now, Billy Casper had been dropping like that for 30 years. I guarantee you, January 1 on the tour, you're going to get a pro who for 30 years has been dropping the ball like this. He's going to drop and he's going to hit it and the rules of history say it's a one-stroke penalty. Because the new rules require you to drop the ball at knee height. Right. We'll go over those, but those are the three. Everything that we're going to talk about tonight falls into one of these three categories. Elimination, the accidental, no harm, no foul. Permit actions previously prohibited or it simplifies some procedure involved. All right, so let's talk about some of these that are the, the changes. Accidental deflections, no longer a penalty. Ball in motion, other than on putting green, and we're going to talk about putting green because the putting green has a lot of different rules involved in the putting green. So what's the general rule? No penalty, play the balls that lies. Give you these four examples. You're, in the, you're ready to hit. You shank it off the toe and hit your bag. Currently, it's a one-stroke penalty. Next year, it goes away. No penalty. Uh, player shot hits a tree, bounces back and hits the player. No penalty. Player shot hits another player or his or her equipment. No, no uh, penalty. Player hits a her ball more than once. The double hit. No penalty. The key to all of these is these are accidental deflections. And these are no harm, no foul penalty. By definition, it's accidental, therefore you're not doing it on purpose. And who knows what's gonna happen when you hit your golf bag, where it's gonna go and so forth. So the new rules say we play your ball as a lies. Everybody got that? Yeah. Yep. Go to the next one. Accidentally moving a ball at rest. The previous slide dealt with moving a ball uh, in motion hit something. Now we're going to talk about a ball at rest. Ball at rest, again, other than on a putting green, we'll talk about a putting green uh, a little bit later. Accidentally moves while taking, this is the key phrase, reasonable actions in applying the rules, there is no penalty. All right, let's talk about some examples. You're searching for the ball in the leaves. No, no penalty. You just put it back. 2018, it's a penalty. 2019, it's not a penalty. Uh, lifting ball to take relief. So you're standing on the cart path, you know you're gonna take relief, you're not really paying attention, and you, uh, what did I say, you drop your club on the ball. As long as you're in the process of taking re relief under the rules, and you're, you're permitted to take relief from a cart path, there is no penalty as long as it's accidental. Another example, lifting ball to identify it, uh, someone says, is that your ball? And you're about to put your coin down to lift it, to identify it, and you, what did I say? And you kick, you slip, you fall, whatever. As long as it's part of the act of uh, lifting the ball, no penalty, you play it as a lies. Nice, huh? These are all no harm, no fall penalties. Yeah, um, Karen. Put that on the tee box. Ball pulled out. That's a great question, Karen. I have a slide on that. Can you wait just maybe 10 minutes? <laughs> no? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, what if I'm addressing the ball not on a tee, and I move it an inch? This is for most accidental movements. I didn't get down to the final point, and this is where you're going, I think. 
there still get a penalty if the player accidentally kicks the ball while walking down the fairway. Not, not everything is forgiven, but if you're walking down the fairway and that's your ball and you're not paying attention and you kick it, you're going to get a penalty, one stroke. If you're addressing your ball and you're not careful and you move it, you're going to get a penalty. Okay. We're not talking about the teeing areas. There are separate rules for the teeing areas. Tom. Ball's resting against a stick. You pull the stick away, it moves. No, 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 Don. You can't do that. I know. You're going to get a penalty stroke. Because you, that's, that's called moving a loose impediment, which is... This, what you've done is you've caused your ball to move. That is not technically an accidental movement uh, under this, uh, what I'm talking about here, because you're intentionally pulling your ball back. Can you play it back or play it again? Um, one of the sacraments, one of the rules of golf that you always have to follow is if your ball is ever at rest and it moves, you always put it back. I don't know of an exception to that unless you can take some sort of relief, but that's the rule. Even if it's not, you know, if it's somebody else's ball, they kick it, whatever. If it was at rest, you put it back. All right, Karen, I guess it wasn't even 10 minutes. Are you ready? Okay. This is a big change. Teeing area rules. This rule was put into place for beginning golfers and less skilled golfers. It is not for the higher skilled golfers, the pros, and so forth. It applies to everybody, but it really doesn't have much application for the higher skilled golfers. Um, oops, sorry. Well, let's do that. What is the teeing area? The teeing area, on the, you got two tee blocks, you go two club lengths back, that's your teeing area. So when we're talking about the teeing area rules, we're only talking about this. If you go to the first uh, teeing area at Blackhawk, you have the big pot up there and you have a black set of tees and you have a white set of tees and then you go down and then there's a red and I think the goals are down there. The top thing is not the teeing area, that's two separate teeing areas, one for the black and one for the white. So when we talk about teeing area, that's what we're talking about. So here's the, uh, here's the rule. You may always lift, move, or re-tee a ball in the teeing area. This is a drastic change from 2018. Example, the player whiffs and his ball is still on the tee. You can pick the ball up, you can go to a different spot, you can put it on there, you can put it on the ground, you can clean it, you can do anything you want. What, what, what's your next shot? Number two. So Currently, is whiff is still a, a stroke? Yes, because yes, you you've whiffed. You intended to strike the ball, but you don't. Today, if you whiffed and then you moved your to a different spot, you would get a penalty for playing under stroke and distance. You've now moved it to a different spot. Under the new rules, if you whiff, you get to you get to uh, play on. Second, player nudges the ball off the tee and it's still in the teeing area. You can play as it lies. You can move it. You can re-tee it as long as it's in the teeing area. But it's still then you're hitting your second shot. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you, because nudging the ball means you hit the ball. I'm not talking about nudging with your foot. A whip is still a stroke, too. A, a, whip, a whip is still a stroke. But you don't hit the ball from where it lies. Right. As long as the ball is in the team here. Third example, the ball hits a tree, comes back, and is lying in the team here. As strange as this sounds, you can pick it up, you can re-tee it anywhere you want in the team area, you play on, and you're only hitting your second shot. What if you bumped it by mistake and you nudged it off the tee? Like you're talking to your friend what? when you shouldn't be and you just happen to knock it well, off. Why did you hit it off? Your club, your foot? Anything. A, a ball on the tee ground is not in play until the stroke is made. So if you, if you don't intend to make a stroke, if you just whack on your club and you hit the ball and it drops into the tee area, that's not a stroke. But a practice stroke. If you intend to stroke, to make the stroke, it's a stroke. It's a stroke. If you don't intend to, it's not a stroke. So in your example, I assume you learned a practice swing. You're not intending to hit the ball. If you're not intending to hit the ball, there is no penalty. And now you're in the team here. What can you do in the team here? You can lift it, you can move it, and you can re it. Show, show the team area again. Is it from the tee box back? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if it goes, if it goes forward. 
from the tea box. See, so um, not in the tea. What tea I'm saying is, most people, uh, most people tee off here. You can go back too close, to break, but most people tee off here. So if you're right here, so if you're playing the black tees on number one, and you nudge it, this rolls five feet, and you're in the white tee area, you are not in the quote teeing area. Because the teeing area that you're playing are the black tees. So, Pappy, don't do that, no? I won't. <laughs> so, if it nudges forward, yeah. you're outside of the teeing area. You're you're out. No, if you, if you take a swing and it nudges and you're here, you're, you're now line one. And you, you're not, the teeing area rules do not apply to you because it's not in the teeing area. Right. 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 Move your tee shot back five feet. Give you, right. If you're, if you're, uh, Limited skill, and you're pretty sure you're not going to get more than five feet. It's a good <laughs> idea to take it from here rather than here. Not to get too, too far down in the weeds, but if, if you came as close as you possibly could to put the key in your ball at the leading edge of that team area, and you knock it off the tee wall addressing the ball, and it actually ended up being ahead of that. And so that would be the advice you No, but you said addressing the ball. If you address the ball, that is not a stroke. You're not intending to hit the ball. I assume that's what you mean by addressing the ball. So there's no penalty. Your ball is still in the tee here. I mean, your ball is literally laying here. But that's no different than if you went to tee it and you, you know, he accidentally kicked okay. it. So, so let me ask the real question. Is there any reason to, to tee it three feet behind the front? Well, I was being somewhat facetious. If you're pretty sure you're only going to hit it five feet, you're better off hitting it from here because then your five feet is going to leave you here and you get your routine. But if you're confident that you can hit it more than five feet, you're probably better off from here. Okay, but you're not in any jeopardy of having a different rule apply by hitting it off. By, by if you're a skilled enough player that that's not going to happen. But and you are. You could, you could knock it off the tee as part of the address procedure. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's right. That's right. All right, teeing area. Did we finish the teeing area? No. Well, the player takes relief from a penalty area and drops in the teeing area. Example of that, you get your ball out of bounds, you want to go back to the teeing area, and you drop it in the teeing area, and your buddy says, well, no, you can re-tee it. You say, oh, shit, I didn't know that. How do you know that? Well, you may always lift, move, and re-tee a ball in the teeing area. Oh, good. What do we got? Bunkers. Big changes on the bunkers. I've already alluded to that. 19, 2018, you cannot lift any loose impediment or move a loose impediment from a bunker. What are loose impediments? Stones, leaves, twigs, black walnut, banana peels. You can't move. It's two stroke penalty. 2019, you may move loose impediments. You may touch loose impediments during your swing. So the girl that had the black walnuts, she could simply move them. And if there was still one there, and in her backswing, if she hit the walnut, there's no issue. Same thing with, with twigs and leaves and so forth. There's a big problem right now with leaves in the bunkers. If you have leaves in a bunker and you find your ball, you are not permitted to touch those leaves, you can't move those leaves, and you can't touch them with your club in the backswing. That's all going away in 2019. 2019, you can move the loose impediments, and then you can touch them on your swing. Ah, you get a penalty time. You caused your ball at rest to move. And what do you do when the ball at rest is moved? You always put it back down. You still get a penalty, but you always put it back. Um, you still get a penalty for hitting sand during a back swing. They didn't take that one. So you cannot take a practice swing in a bunker and touch the sand. And you can't take, you can't touch the sand in your back swing um, for a stroke in a bunker. But here's the one that's very interesting. This is another rule that was put into effect to help the beginning golf lesson. There is now an extra relief option for an unplayable ball in a bunker. For two penalty strokes, the player may drop back on the line outside the bunker. 
So take this example. You're on the tenth hole of that black hole. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You're on the tenth hole of the black hole. Oh, yeah. Your ball is in the bunker. Yeah. Maybe you hit your second shot and you're buried right in the top of that bunker. Anyone who's played that hole knows you can't play it. Right now, your options are it's a one stroke penalty and you have to drop the ball in the bunker. One of the interesting things about bunker play is it is the thing that will distinguish the, the greatest distinction between the beginning golfer and the professional golfer. A professional golfer will say, I'll take any shot out of a bunker at any time. It is the easiest shot in golf. You ask the beginner, it is the hardest shot. They can go into that 10th bunker and they can take five shots. And knock it out. And knock it out. <laughs> so what the new rule does is it allows you um, for an extra penalty stroke, so you're going to have to take two penalty strokes, and what you do is if you drop the ball, so assume that that's your ball, you go directly from the flag to the ball, and you go outside the bumper, you go back as far as you want. This is, um, a ball is unplayable if you declare it unplayable. A ball is not unplayable because it's, quote, not playable. It's only non-unplayable if you declare, declare it to be unplayable. So, if, if, a, if a beginner is there in two, that beginner may say, you know, I can't possibly get it. So you think we tend to get it. So for two penalty strokes, the person gets to put it here and then hopefully hit it on the ground. Um, this, unfortunately, this, this is not the tenth pole. What this is showing is this is not the tenth hole because the tenth hole is a, was a bunker, a sand all the way up. What this is depicting is uh, cut sod. It's hard to see, but that's the British system where they make sod bunkers like the uh, the seventeenth at the road hole. That's what that is. But if your ball is plugged in the face of ten or eighteen in the face of the bunker, you you're still in the bunker. It is in the bunker. Right. But this one, if you plug in. A lip that is not covered with sand, which is not a 10, by the way, but um, I'm trying to think of one we read. We don't have many black ones where you have a high lip. But anyways, if your ball is plugged in a high lip, that ball is not in the bunker in 2019. you got to go to Europe for that. So you, don't get, you can't pull it out for two strokes. So you have to play it as it lies. <laughs> well, what I'm talking about here is the bunker rule. So okay. we're getting we're getting off the We're getting off the rule. If your ball is in the bunker, you have the extra option of going outside for two penalty strokes. If your ball is there and it's not in the bunker, you can still declare it unplayable and you have your choices. You can go two club lengths, no near the hole. You can go two club lengths back or you can go back on the stroke of distance. But you don't get the option of taking two penalty strokes because it's not a bunker. So in the case of the ball on the race, what would one do? Well, there? Like, I guess I shouldn't have shown this slide. I don't mind answering the question, but there's more to this slide. Um, what this is depicting is the ball on that rake. See the green thing? That means it's in the bunker. Right. So that ball is in the bunker. And what you would do is that you would lift that rake and then you would drop that ball in the bunker. Okay. This ball is not in the bunker because it's on grass. This ball is not in the bunker because it's not in sand, it's in dirt. This is the only ball in the bunker. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on. All right, penalty. <coughs> this is very interesting. This is a new name for water. Oh. So on number, next year, number five is not a water head. It's a penalty here. 13 is not a lateral water head. It's a penalty here. And a penalty area is any body of water on the course. Oh, we're drinking. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> we got to sell some. Make it easier for you to sell this. Um, a penalty area is any body of water on the course. In the new change for 2000. 819 is right there. Any part of the course the committee defines as a penalty. So at Blackhawk, the committee is perhaps Derek, 
perhaps Matt, perhaps the golf committee, but whoever decides that, decides that. If it's a tournament, it's the committee in charge of the tournament. And what that says is you can define anything you want as a penalty area. So an example, the 11th hole at University Ridge. If you're a highly skilled badger, man or woman, it's the easiest hole in the world. You blast your drive down, you hit an iron onto the green, you get your birdie and you go on to 12. If you're a high school boy or girl, it's the hardest hole on the course because both sides have trees and the minute you get off of that fairway, you're into the trees, it's not a lateral hazard, you gotta find your ball and then you gotta hit it out. And if you don't find it, you gotta go back under stroke and distance. This new ability of the committee, if it wants to, it could simply paint a red line down the side and say those are penalty areas. So when the player hits his ball or her ball into that penalty area, they treat it like a red penalty area. They go to the edge of the, uh, of the, of the penalty area, take the two club lengths, and on they go. Just cost them one penalty. One stroke. One stroke. One stroke. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another big change for 2019. Now, Dan, will they have the, the, the golf committee would determine that and they would redline it or something? Yeah, well, it's just like we have on five. Yeah. You know, Chad or whoever has, has a red line down there which is an excellent segue into my next point, and that is, there are no special rules limiting how a player can play from a penalty area. This is a big change. Most of you know, I think you know, that if your ball is in a hazard, a water hazard, and you find it, you're able to play it. But you may not touch or move loose impediments, you may not make a practice swing in the area, and you may not ground your club. Now in 2019, you can do all of those. So if your ball is in a Let's say on, uh, on five, it's, it's over the red line that's not in the water. You can take practice swings, you can ground your club, you can do anything you want, you can treat it just like that ball is in any place in the course. Dan, how does that affect the hazard on 13? Or are you going to get to that later? Um, well, it, it doesn't affect it. The hazard on 13 is what we call the penalty area. The concept of, quote, environmentally sensitive area is replaced by a term called no play zone, which is effectively the same. And it's for the golf committee to decide in 2019 whether they want to treat that as just a penalty area and allow you to go in and play it as it lies, or whether they want to prohibit play. And the only reason that it was set up that way five years ago was the village said you can't go in it. Now I've been told by Chad and others that the village doesn't care. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, yeah, so yeah. we as a committee can decide what we want to do. My recommendation would be, if you find it, you can play it. But if you want to take it out, you're going to get your one time. All right, putting green. There are huge changes on the putting green for 2019, and they're divided into two parts. One is a ball at rest on the putting green, and then we'll talk about uh, what happens if you're putting for the putting green and the ball is in motion. All right, first change. You may touch your line of putt. You say, well, what do you mean touch your line for putting? Can't you always do that? The answer is no. Um, there, I had a, a qualifying, uh, I was a rules official at Maple Bluff for a qualifying for, for uh, the state amateur, and the guy was 10 feet from the hole, uh, and he was gonna putt, and he does that crazy thing where he walks halfway up, covers his club, and he set his club right on the ground. The minute he set his club on the ground, it's a two-stroke penalty. And he didn't make the play off, and he complained to the, uh, the WSGA headquarters and said that uh, that can't be right. And the USGA says, well, yes, it is. 2019, that goes away. And that's part of the no harm, no foul. I mean, this kid, when you think about it, got no benefit at all. He didn't, you know, what was he trying to do? He, he, but he got penalty. Now he's not going to get it. Here's the big change. This makes a lot of people happy. You may repair damage on the putting green. You are not limited to a ball mark. You can repair a ball mark. You can replace shoe damage, spike marks, scrapes, indentations caused by equipment or flag stick. The person takes the flag stick out and there's a big groove. Today you can't repair that. Next year you can. Um, animal tracks. 
embedded object. So you're playing the 15th hole, and the group ahead of you stepped on all the acorns. And now they're embedded in the 15th green, you've got a putter. That's the way life is. 2019, you can remove those objects, and then you can repair the damage by pinching the, uh, the hole together to make a smooth, a smooth surface. That, that's kind of a big one because... Yeah, they, that's they, a big one. Didn't they put it in because the pros were standing out there for hours repairing ball mark, uh, spike marks and all that? Well, they, they, they could they, repair spike marks. They, could, they couldn't they repair could. spark marks, they could repair ball marks. Yeah, they the could reason that this was put in is the, is the challenge, and this is one of the themes of the new rules. We're only going to penalize people for not playing the challenge of the game that we, the USGA, thinks is part of the challenge of playing the game. Now, you can argue whether it is or is not the challenge of the game, but the USGA has come down on the fact that the challenge of playing on the putting green is to play across a smooth surface and being able to judge which way it breaks and how much. It is not to hit over acorns and other objects in spite of our So that's why you can repair all that. But won't that slow things down? Yes, that will slow things down. <laughs> Very good point. Yeah. Can you do, uh, make repairs when you're not on the green? Um, we're talking only about the putting green. So the answer to your question is no. So Dan, if I'm on the green on 15 and I see a bunch of acorns that are not in my way but I pick those off and move them away for the benefit of players coming behind me, is that a penalty? Per 2018, those are called loose impediments. We, so had, that we, had, a, we had a slide on that. You are allowed to move loose impediments on playing. Okay. What we're talking about here is not loose impediments but an embedded so even if an embedded acorn was not in my putt line, if I moved, removed it for just because it was there and it shouldn't be, is that a penalty to me? No, we're getting off on the weeds here a little bit. Okay. If, you, if this is your line of putt and you go over here and you repair something, there's no penalty. Okay. The penalty is only if you are affecting the line of putt. Okay. Your putt. Your putt. The line for your putt. Here's a couple of just, there's a caveat which you can't repair damage from normal maintenance practices. This is the big variation. You say, well, why can't I repair those? And the answer is because the round would never be open. You have 10,000 aeration holes, and I'm a person who did this. So that, I think that's the reason. The other thing is natural wear and tear. You can't, uh, the, the hole just over time is kind of sagging or something. You can't, you can't do it. If, if there's a big gouge in the hole, so you put the stuff out of the hole. If the there's a big gouge, then you're under the scrapes and indexation caused by equipment or plastic when you're able to repair it. So. Um, Last bullet point on this is, this is the Dustin Johnson role. You know, recognize that. 2016, Dustin Johnson was on the putting green. He, I don't know, was four or five feet away, he put his uh, club down, the ball moved. The question was, did he cause it to move? Did the wind cause it to move? Did the gravity cause it to move? The rules official decided that Johnson himself caused it to move, which I think was the right ruling, but it's the view there. And Johnson got a one-stroke penalty. He put the ball back, on he went, cost him one penalty stroke. This is, again, the no harm, no fall. What did Johnson get by having that ball move a half an inch and then replace it? He got no advantage at all. Secondly, it was accidental. No harm, no fall. He gets to put it back. So if your ball is at rest on the putting green, you get to, if you do it accidentally, you can kick your ball, you can kick another player's ball, you can drop your ball marker on your on the ball, you can drop the ball on the ball marker. Um, if the ball moves, you just replace it. And this is on the putting green. Accidental movement of the ball on the putting green, no penalty. No. Yeah. The situation came up. The guy was approaching, he was addressing his ball with a putter, drop, and bring his ball down, hit the ball with his putter, addressing the ball. Is that Today, that's a penalty. 2019, it's not a penalty. As long as it was done accidentally. Which is what you're saying. Yeah. And all of this stuff presupposes accidentally. And so one of the things, whoops, one of the things, as a rules official, you always ask is, did you intend to do this? 
Yeah. And once in a while, the person says, yeah, it's been in not in this situation, but if it's accidental, there's no going to find a penalty if it does it on purpose. Generally speaking, it's not And you could be disqualified if you're doing deliberate stuff to move other people qualified. All right. Can you go back to slide before you go forward? If I can figure out how to do this. When do you have to take a draw? When are you allowed to hit it from the penalty? Yes. And when do you um, have to You can always hit your outside. ball from a penalty area whenever you want. So if you if you go into the pond on five and you find your ball and it's three feet under the water and you uh -huh. think you can swing, you can go ahead and do it. The only exception, it's not really exception to the penalty area rule, but if that area is marked as a quote, no play zone for 2019 or an environmentally hazard for 2018, that means you can't go in it. You can't play it. It's for both. Is that a white stake? Uh, the course is going to mark it various ways. Normally you mark it with a red stake and some green top. And we'll discuss how to do that for next week. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Oh, that's nice. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. Another big change in the fighting game. <laughs> Um, so now we're talking about basically the flag stick. When you putt, you can leave the flag stick in the hole. Even if you're three feet from the hole or six feet. There is no penalty for the ball hitting the flag stick left in the hole, the person attending the flag stick, or a removed flag stick, i.e. when the flag oh. So, this is a big change. So, if you want to putt, this was done largely for case play reasons. Yeah. If you're 60 feet from the hole, you don't give a damn. You just want to putt it up there. Why should you have to walk up 60 feet and walk 60 feet back? But it also, if you're three feet away, you don't have to take the flag stick out. And there it is. You can bang it as hard as you want. It hits and goes in and it does. And if it hits and goes, it's an accidental deflection, and we'll get to that when the play ball flies. Yeah. So are we going to have this take the slags of golf, put it back in, take it out, put it back in? Depends on who you play with, Tom. <laughs> but you could have one player who wants it in and one player who wants it out. No. Same as today. Same as today, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of people that you just But you don't have to stand there and hold it anymore. Oh, you can stand. Yeah. All right. Were you now, doing that? Huh? Were you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I want to mention on putting green, I caution you, this is complicated. I, I hesitate to even put it on here because it's complicated. But on the other hand, it's kind of an important concept, so I'm going to go over it. If you don't remember it, I don't care. But at least there it is. Ball, a uh, ball putted from putting green is ac accidentally hits a person, animal, or object. Remember, if you're on the course anywhere else and it hits a person, animal, object, what do you do? You play the ball is alive. You don't care. No penalty. On the putting green, it's 180 degrees different. It's a do-over. So if you putt from the putting green and your ball, when I say a do-over, the stroke doesn't count and you're going to replace it. Example, ball hits another player who is walking across the player's line for putting who's not paying attention. Ever happened? I don't know. It's a do-over. Ball hits an animal, such as a mouse. It's a do-over. Ball hits another ball in motion. It's a do-over. But here's why it's complicated. Here are the exceptions. And the exceptions almost swallow up the rule because this is all that happens to people on the putting green. The ball hits a flag stick or the person attending the flag stick hits a ball at rest or a ball marker. Those things are all the things that you expect to see around the hole. And in those cases, the exception kicks in and you're going to play the ball with the lies. So the rule is if you're on the putting green and it hits a person analogic, it's a do-over. 
except if it hits everything that you expect to be right there, and then it's pi as it lies. And notice that we all do that. If you're playing for 30 feet, somebody marks the ball marker five feet from the hole, you putt, the ball runs over the top of the ball marker, no harm to fall, you play as it lies. No? Yeah, what if you're in a waffle match and you want to give your partner a second a practice putt, and so he putts his first putt and you just walk in and the ball hits you? Um, the question is whether it's accidental or deliberate. And I don't want to talk about deliberate because we'll get off into the okay, so into the moon I stuff. That. But if it's deliberate, it's a two-stroke penalty and a possible disqualification. Understood. Everything we're talking about here is accidental. Okay, got it all. Well, yeah. let me qualify that. Everything meaning when you putt with the flag stick left in the hole, you are, if you will, deliberately trying to hit the flag stick. Because that's what the hole is. But the rest of this stuff are accidental. Okay. Uh, dropping procedure. Oh, this is fun. So I talked about Billy Casper. January 1, they'll play out in, uh, in uh, Kapalua. And the pros will be out there, the top 24 players in the world. And what are they going to do? Guarantee it. Someone's going to go like this. Drop it because they've been doing it for 30 years. That's a one stroke penalty if he hits it. Oh. If he, oh, if, he hits the ball, if he hits the ball. So what do you got to do? You have to drop it correctly. How do you drop it? Must drop from knee height straight down without touching. So what is the definition of knee height? Knee height is, is a um, distance, it's not a location. And by that I mean, for me, when I'm on the course, 20 inches is the bottom of my knee, 24 is the top. How do I know that? Because I measured it. So when I drop a ball on the course, I have to drop a ball from knee height, which means between 20 and 24 inches. If you're taller than me, it's higher. If you're shorter than me, it's lower. So let's, let's have an example here. So you got this person here. That's her knee. She's dropping from knee height. This guy, that's his knee. He's dropping from knee height. No one can notice that he's not standing but he's dropping from the same distance as this person. Here, she's not dropping from knee height, she's dropping from shoulder height. And here, he's not dropping from knee height, he's dropping from, I don't know what the So if he's bending down, it's where his knees are. No, it's just, it's just, it's just the exact opposite. It's always the distance, it's always knee height. Because he's trying to drop. Which is 20 to 24 inches. Yeah. You are permitted to lie on the ground if you want, but Reach up to 20 to 24, 24 inches. inches and drop. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. okay, so if you drop it the, old, the current way, if you drop it the current way, that's a penalty. If you play the ball, you're always allowed to correct. If you drop it correctly, you can always correct it. What's the play. advantage of dropping the current way? None. 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 So uh, it's a big, no, no, no. It, it is a great, it's a great addition. The reason is, yeah, I don't want to get into this too much, but if you drop currently, from this height. Yeah. There are nine times in which you have to redraw the ball. Nine. 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 No one knows that. Most rules officials don't know it. If you drop from knee height, you drop from this height, and you, you, you eliminate a lot of those ball blowers. Which then gets me to the next point, and that is where to drop. Always drop in a relief area, you never drop a point. Under the current rules, sometimes you drop a point or a spot, sometimes you drop an area. The new rules, this greatly simplifies it, you always drop in a relief area. I'll give you an example. A relief area, you have a reference point, a side, one plus one plus two, and a limitation such as no closer to the So here's an example. Your ball plugs in the center of the fairway. That's a plug ball. You're entitled to free relief for a better ball. Your reference point is immediately behind. The reference point for taking relief is the spot behind where the ball is. So that's your reference point. You get one club length, no near the hole. So your relief area is always going to be a semicircle, unless for some reason it's truncated because there's something on this side or something on this side that you can't drop it, such as a bunker has a penalty area. So this is an example of a relief area. That's where you can drop the ball. 
And the beauty of this is that's where you drop it. You don't have to drop it here. You don't have to drop it here. You can drop it anywhere you want. So you pick your spot, you drop it. And if you're dropping it to the height, it's most likely going to stay in here. The last point on this is the ball must come to rest in the river. So you got to drop it for any period, and it has to come to rest in the river. So let's look at that. All right. So this person is dropping in the relief curve. The ball gets here and it goes here. So that's a that's a full legal drop. This person, this is the same person, is dropping here, and her ball comes to rest here. So she dropped in, but it's out, so she has to redrop. This person dropped outside and it comes to rest in the relief. That's also incorrect. So you gotta drop it in and it's gotta come to relief. Now the interesting thing about these two is if this person plays it from here, what has she done? She's played from her wrong place. You always get a two stroke penalty if you play from the wrong place. What has this person done? She played from the wrong place? No, she played from the right place. She's playing from the relief area. But she used the wrong procedure. So this player gets a one stroke penalty, wrong procedure. This girl gets a two stroke penalty. Situations that are just eliminated because now, no matter where you are, if you drop in the relief area, it comes up. It has to come right. Now, if you go anywhere in the world other than this, under the current rules, you could actually drop here. You could come to rest within two yeah. code lengths and the ball's in play. One club length. A club length is defined under the new rules. We now have a definition. It's defined as the longest club in your bag of the 14 that you have selected, except your putter. That's the definition. So, Karen, you may have a greater relief area than your daughter. It's one of the advantages of being tall, right? Karen? <laughs> yeah. No, um, or can you place it? You no, I, I skipped over that. Yeah. It's, it's right here, ball. Ball must come to rest in the relief area. If not, ball is dropped again a second time, and then placed if still not in the relief area as to the second drop. So you drop it twice, and then you place it in the relief area. So you try to do anywhere in the relief area. Uh, the procedure for replacing a ball, this is also a change. How do you replace it? You must replace it with your hand. You see people taking a club and putting their putter back because they're too lazy to bend it over and kind of look, and they push it over with their putter and so forth. That's now uh, Where to replace it? You always you always replace it as a spot, never in an area. If you're dropping, you're always putting it in a relief area. Replace is you're always putting it in the spot. Is this if your ball is damaged? No, well, that could be, but that's where this almost always comes up is your ball is at rest when you kick it, you move it, or somebody else needs it. You have to replace it. And replace means you put the ball back in the spot. That's what replace means. And then this is, a, this is also a change. Most people don't know the current rule, but I'll go over it quickly. Um, if you don't know the spot or the lie, you estimate either one or the other, and you do your best, and you estimate it, you put it there. Under the current rules, it's odd. If you don't know the spot, then you drop it, and so you're dropping by replacing, and it's, it's, it's stupid. But under the new rule, you're just gonna, you're gonna put it there. And here's the caveat. You don't get to place it on the top of the grass. If your ball was in tall grass, you are required to estimate where it was and to place it in that spot. How do you know where it goes? You estimate it. Well, what if I don't estimate it? You use a reasonable judgment. 
What if I don't have any reasonable suspicion? Right. Then you go home. Yeah. So if you can't and see it, then you just assume where it was. Yeah. That's the best you can do. You can't see it. That's the best. You can't just lay it on top of it. No, right. Right. But you're required to, to <laughs> make reasonable efforts to ask the people that are playing with it. But you can't. If everyone says, well, it's, it's buried somewhere, we can't find it. You can't do it. Well, we're not talking to not found ball. Correct. We are talking about a ball that has been kicked. Oh, 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 okay. And you have a pile of leaves and you kick it. Or you're in tall grass, that's a better example. And the grass is matted over, and you know the ball was underneath because no one saw it. You can't just get up there. Yeah. Can you address the question, what happens if you don't find the ball? Uh, yeah, you can't play any more golf. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you use 57 balls. <laughs> uh, I'll talk about the new search rules in just a minute. Tonight. All right. Um, all right. Well, I'll spend a little time on this. New local rule. Extra relief option for a ball that is out of bounds or lost, sorry, ball lost or out of bounds. For two penalty strokes, the player may use the extra relief option. A couple of caveats. It's an extra relief option. You're never required to do this. I'm going to go over it in a minute. And next, it is a local rule. Local rule means it's not part of the rules of golf unless the tournament or the club or whatever you're playing in has adopted it. Does anyone at Blackhawk know a local rule that we have adopted at Blackhawk? Local rule? Flower bed. We have one that says anytime you're in a flower bed, you are you are not obligated to play as a wise, you can take free relief. Another one is look at the back of the scorecard, if your ball crosses the public road from 13 to 16, under the rules of golf, your ball is still on the course and it's not on the ball. We've adopted a local rule that says it's out of bounds if it's if it's across the public road. And you do that for equity purposes because if you do it kind of a lousy shot and you're on the road, you're out of bounds, and if you get a really, really, really lousy shot, you ought not to be still on the course and able to play. That's the reason for that. So anyways, this has to be done by local rule. Whether we do it or not, I don't know. It is recommended by the USGA. There it is. This, lo this local rule is intended, is, sorry, is not intended for higher level players such as professional or arena owners. It's kind of for club country. Maybe not so good club country. <laughs> but that's a decision that, that whoever's in charge, Derek or Matt, will have to do. So anyways, let's go through it. This is the third, this is the third hole at Blackhawk. This is the forward team. You hit your ball and it goes right there, out of bounds. You go out of those pine trees and it goes out of bounds. And when your ball's sitting there, the first thing you'll notice is there are three dogs. I've never been there. You know their part by name. So you got to have an option. Under the current rules, you, you, you say, oh, I'm not going to play it. Jesus. So you go back to the tee, and what do you do? You hit your third shot. Why is it your third? Because that's one. You take a penalty stroke. That's your third shot. And you hit it there. So if all goes well, you're hitting your fourth shot to the green. Okay. The purpose of this new local rule is to put you in exactly the same situation as if you had gone back to the tee, but it saves time. So here's the way it works. You hit it, it goes out of bounds. You go to the edge of the fairway, no near the hole. That's point B. You get to go two club lengths into the fairway. And you get to drop your ball anywhere within this area. For two penalty strokes. So you hit one, you take two penalty strokes, you're hitting your fourth shot into the green. Just as if you had gone back. Now obviously, this helps the, the less skilled player because the less skilled player is less likely to get their second shot up in this area. But a highly skilled player is most often going to get it up there if not better. Uh, I don't know. I think there's a, I think it says you cannot, I haven't seen that, but I think there was a, a caveat that if you hit your provisional ball, you don't have this option. But I don't know about that. I haven't seen it. It's for those dreamers. I think they're in bounds still, and they get down there and they find it out of bounds. 
But there's no reason not to hit a provisional ball. That's, that's, the, that's the dumbest thing when people say, oh, I don't want to hit a provisional ball. You get a free practice win. You know? Do it. So if you hit a provisional and, you, and that's, say, it's in the fairway, but then you're okay because it's the same penalty. No, no, it's three instead of four. Yeah, you no, no. If you hit a provisional, if you hit this out of bounds, and then you hit a provisional, and you go up there and it's out of bounds, then you're hitting, that, you're lying three, hitting your four shot. Which you'd feel you if you just yeah, did it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing a provisional does is it saves you to walk back because you hit it and then you hit it. Um, this is basically the same thing. But it's a ball lost. It's also the third hole of black arm. Instead of hitting it out of bounds, you hit it left into the trees. It's the same thing. You estimate where the ball's lost. You go to the edge of the fairway, two club lengths, and you get to drop it. The only difference is you get two club lengths on the other side. And you can drop it anywhere within this area. Now, no one's going to do that. Everyone, everyone's going to drop it. But it gives you the option if for some reason you want to hit a 200 yard shot rather than 150 yard shot. But is the answer to that question, so do you hit a provisional on that? The answer to that is I don't know. There was some talk, and I haven't seen any final thing by the USGA. There was talk. First of all, this has to be adopted by local rules. And it's questionable whether they do it. And if you're playing in a tournament, they're not going to adopt it. It's, I mean, a city tournament, something like that. And the question still is, if you hit a provisional, have you given up your right to play this, this um, extra option? The answer is I don't know the answer because I don't think the USDA has come out with the ruling. But it's still a local rule. So still it still has to be a local rule. What? What will our committee